Welcome everybody to the call. We are recording this for you to watch later and we will post it on YouTube. So if you don't want to see your face this big on the video, black out your screen. However, I will encourage you guys to leave your cameras on because I want to see your lovely faces while I'm talking to you. It makes it, makes it way better for me to present to you, actually see you. Um, and don't worry if you're in bed or whatever, I can barely see you because you're like a postage stamp, but still you're there. So my name is Eric Johnson. Welcome to the call. I'm the creator of Teamsy. Very excited to talk to you tonight about Teamsy. Just so you know, Teamsy is an application. It helps you get super mega organized in your business. It's very easy to use. Trust me, I'm not a techie guy. If I can use it, you can use it. Um, and, uh, and you're going to be able to get all your income producing activities done in less than an hour a day using Teamsy. I'm going to show that to you in a minute. But first and foremost, I want to talk to you a little bit about the system. See, Teamsy is more than just a software. It's a system. It's based on a system, uh, an approach to the business. We call it relationship marketing. Okay, so I want to teach you a little bit about relationship marketing tonight. It's a different approach than maybe what you've heard in the past. Maybe you've heard a little bit about the Teamsy approach, and that's why you're here. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. I've got a presentation here. And the topic I want to teach tonight is how to leverage relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. Okay, a power hour. This is one of our hashtags, power hour boss. You guys are going to feel like this after you've used Teamsy a couple of days. Okay. So a little of my backstory. I come from a background of coaching and consulting. That's what I've been doing. Um, I don't know, 16, 17, oh, gosh, at least 16 years. I lost count. Helping people build their business, a relationship-based business. Okay. And this is what I've been doing uh, as a career. I fell into network marketing, direct sales by accident. I found some products that really helped me. I loved them. They changed my life. And I was just sharing them because I was excited. I didn't even realize it was a great opportunity. Once I did realize that it was a great business opportunity, I looked at it from the perspective of a professional business coach. And I said, okay, in order to be successful in this business, I know exactly what I need to do as far as developing relationships, building my business, building my base. But what tools are available to me to help me leverage my time? How many of you feel like you just don't have enough hours in the day? So the truth is, is every business, most, most industries have professional tools that allow people to leverage their time and to be organized. Our industry didn't, at least the tools, they didn't have any tools that were elegant or easy to use for sure. And anything that I could find was based on the opposite philosophy of, of my heart. It was not based on building relationships. It was based on finding sales and moving on to the next. The whole find them, what is it? Find them, fleece them, and forget them approach, right? Now, look, I know some of you guys, uh, I know that that's not your heart, but sometimes you may have felt that way with the traditional approach. So I was looking for something that was easy to use, something that was based on relationships, and that I could plug into my business and start working with. So long story short, it did not exist, so we built it. And I'll show that to you in a little bit. But first, I want to talk to you a little bit more about relationship marketing. What is relationship marketing? First off, I want you to know what it's not. It's not just selling things to your friends, right? A lot of people, that's what they think it is. It's not just selling things to your friends. It's actually a marketing plan where building relationships is your strategy. Make sense? And I want you to know a lot of people think, oh, well, that's relationship marketing stuff. You know, it's like you hug, it's just like hugging, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. And you'll even hear, maybe some of you guys have even heard from leaders um, in your organization. That stuff doesn't really get results though. I want you guys to know that this is a lead generation system. Relationship marketing is a lead generation system. Okay, that's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. When you have your own business, your first decision is what lead generation system will I employ to build my business? There's different ones, there's different, there's different approaches. Make sense? Okay, and I want you guys to understand this. The first principle here is that Juice Plus products, they're great, right? Tower Gardens are like beyond awesome. But that's not your business. Your business is lead generation. You are in the lead generation business. Because until you can generate leads for your business, you can't bring those products to people. So I want you guys to understand that no matter how busy you are in a day, if you're not doing activities that lead generate, you're not working on your business today. Okay, and that's the difference between busy and productive. Now the good news is with relationship marketing, 
Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. So you are generating leads, but not just to find them, fleece them, and forget them. You're generating leads so that you can develop relationships with those people and help them. What a difference, right? Okay. And then what we do with relationships, and I know I'm just giving you guys like the quick basics, but you got to get these basic concepts. What we do with relationships as we develop them is we turn them into advocates. We turn them into advocates by investing time and in providing outstanding service. An advocate is worth so much more than one customer, aren't they? And so I want you to think about, instead of focusing on who will buy, who will join, think about who will be my advocate. How can I turn this person into my advocate? Okay, now advocates also buy and join, but they also bring people to you. Make sense? Okay, next principle. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. In other words, if you're a jerk, this ain't gonna work, okay? You have to build trust. And um, Julie, were you on my, were you on my call? Uh, was it the week before last when I kind of went off on a tangent about? Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it tonight. Here's the thing though. Our industry teaches us to do things that are a little bit sneaky all the time. True? Oh, you got to create curiosity or you want to hide this piece of information. You have, look, I don't agree with any of that. Look, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying those tactics don't work. I'm saying relationship marketing depends on trust, which means you can't do anything to violate trust, even little things. If you do something a little bit sneaky and then when somebody joins your team and you're like, this is what I did to get you interested, they're like, oh, that's weird. Okay, relationship marketing depends on trust, but trust makes the work fun. When people trust you, you don't have to convince them. You don't have to sell them. You don't have to trick them. You get right to helping them. Trust takes the icky feeling from the sales process, that icky salesperson feeling. How many of you just, the icky salesperson, I don't want to be that person. Or you don't want to be around them. Trust takes that away. Also, instead of this whole go for no philosophy, which I hate, I won't get into it, but um, you get to go for yes. You get to go for yes instead of going for no. All right, I will tell you why. I don't like, to, I don't like the go for no thing because I feel like when the whole idea of going for no's, it's like you're taking relationships getting them to say no because you're giving them an unreasonable offer before you've talked to them and then throwing them away like a dead body because they said no. That's why I don't like it. I think it's selfish. I think it damages relationships and I think it gives our industry a bad reputation. Just so you know. With relationship marketing, we're going to build trust. We're going to build relationships. We're going to get yeses. People, some people will say yes right away, just like when you're going for no. And other people will become our advocates over time. We won't leave any damaged relationships behind us. How cool is that? Okay, so how do you build trust? There's four essential ingredients to building trust. The first is chemistry. Okay, chemistry. Number two is character. Character. Number three is competence. Competence. This is for you guys that are writing it down. Number four is consistency. Consistency. Chemistry, character, competence consistency. All right, let's break these up. Chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, easiest way to think of this is it's really hard to do business with somebody you don't like. True? I know you guys get that right away. Here's the statistic. 86% of North Americans prefer to do business with someone they consider a friend. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big number, isn't it? For me, it's like, man, if you could go to Las Vegas and there was a, there was a table that was 86%, how many of you, you guys would throw all your money at it? That's not, this isn't gambling though. This is actually helping people. 86% prefer to do business with someone that's a friend. You need to find common ground with people. What is it about you that they can relate to? Here's the thing. You have common ground with every single person in the world. If you take a minute to listen and figure out what they're, how they're wired, you'll figure it out. Okay? Find that common ground. Unless there's people that you don't think your products or what you do can help, then don't worry about that. Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you are relatable. Notice that this definition of character is not something you have. You don't have character. 
Character is something you do. Okay, it's important to understand that because a lot of times we feel like our character is intrinsic. How dare you question my character? Um, well, if you're not demonstrating that you care for me, how would I know your character? This is important. And I want you guys to understand, as I'm going through these trust things, the primary way that, we're, that we are um, communicating with people is on social media, right, these days, at least at the beginning. So I want you to really think about how these four essential ingredients filter through what you do and how you interact on social media too. Okay. Are you demonstrating your care? Are you finding common ground with people? Number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. Okay. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. So can you help me? Do you know what you're doing? Can you help me with this? That's my first question. Are you knowledgeable about the products? Do you know stories? Do you know, I know you guys can't make claims about nutritional products, but do you have stories of how they've helped people? Do you, you know, this is important parts of a confidence. Um, one of my, uh, a friend of mine who's a, who's a Juice Plus guy who's, who was in um, previous, one of my boot camps, Ron, I love telling his story because it's amazing. He has stage, had stage, has, I guess he still has stage four cancer, though his last two PET scans have been clean and was, and is in, uh, I forget the word, but he basically terminal, like they don't treat it anymore, right? He's palliative care, I think is the word, but yet his two last two PET scans are clean. Why? Because of juice plus, because of nutrition, because of his tower garden passion. Do you think he's somebody that's competent to help you through read, you know, cleaning out your life. Yes. Now that's the first piece. So I need to know, are you competent? Number two, if I'm in love with it, when I fall in love with this opportunity, do I believe you're the person to mentor me in this business? That's the second piece. There's two pieces of competence in our business, product, mission competence, and business competence. I need to know, are you demonstrating you're good at what you do in your business person? Now, really quick, new people, any new people on the call? Let me see any hands that are new. I know I'm looking at some pros on my screen. I only have five names, five people I can see at a time. For new people, you may have been told in the past, just fake it till you make it, it's okay. And I want you to know that's a terrible idea <laughs> because when you fake anything, you violate trust. And listen, listen how many of you guys have a, a spouse or a significant other? When you violate trust, it's easy to do, isn't it? And is how hard is it to rebuild? Think about that. You don't wanna fake anything. You gotta be real. Now here's the good news. Your team's amazing, your upline's amazing. You don't need to fake anything. Just tell people, hey, I'm new, but I have on speed dial, the number one expert in this, on this, on this product, on this, on this issue, and I can get any question answered. Um, you want to do, join the business? I, yeah, I'm new, but I'm part of one of the most amazing teams with the best systems, the best education in place. I mean, it goes so deep on my team. They even bring the Teamsy guy in to teach us. And that's how good this organization is. So when you're new, you do not need to fake it. Lean into your team, lean into their competence. Okay, guys, teach your new people. Just lean into my competence. Help. I'm, I'm here for you. Text me your questions. Let them know, you know. Um, sometimes when people are brand new, you may even want to do a lot of the communicating for them, you know, a lot of three-way um, chats for them until they get that competence. All right, chemistry, character, competence. One, one principle on this before I move on, and that's this. When someone's going to do business with you, they only care about three things. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Okay, and that's where these three come from. These questions... I, I, I toy with taking this out of the training because I feel like it's another training, but I want you to have these because the truth is, is when you come up, up against any sort of objections in your business, they stem from these questions not being answered for somebody. People will object when they don't know the answer to these questions. Now, they never ask these out loud. They may not even think these. These are heart questions. Does that make sense? And so how you answer this for somebody is build the relationship build the trust that I'm teaching you tonight. Make sense? So you get a great prospect. They're excited to join the team. They've got some objections. You help them overcome those objections. They sign up for your team, yay. Don't miss the lesson. The objections told you the trust isn't there. You have to keep working on that relationship, okay? You're not done yet. Next, 
Consistency. Yay, consistency. How many of you were waiting for me to talk about this one? Yay. You need another person to tell you to be consistent. Here's the good news. You guys are really good at being consistent. You ever think about that? How many of you think you're really good at being consistent? Hold on, let me come out and look at people's hands. I can only see five of your hands and, and two, at least two of the people who, who have been through my training a million times. How many think you're pretty good at being consistent? I've got a few people. Here's the thing, those of you who didn't raise your hand and you're thinking I struggle with consistency, you are very good at being consistent. It's just not always with the habits you want to be consistent with, true? <laughs> We're very good at being consistent. In fact, we're routine-driven animals. Everything we do is part of what we're consistent at. Now, sometimes it's bad, it's bad habits. The good news is you're already good at it, so don't worry about that. But here's the question. How many of you consistently good products of your own product? You use the products, you live the Juice Plus lifestyle. Let me see your hands. Hopefully, I see everybody's hands, right? Good. All right, what about sharing? Sharing your story, sharing your story, going on social media, sharing what you're doing. How many of you guys are good at that? Pretty consistent. Okay, a few. A few of you, that's, there's something to work on for sure. You can't really help people if they don't know you, you're there to help them, right? Okay. What about um, relationships? How many of you would say you're consistent in, con in connecting with the relationships that you have in your life? A couple people, great. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. I love this principle, by the way, um, from one of my favorite books. I'll, ref I'll recommend it to you in a second. This principle, people respect consistency and desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and desire it for themselves. Has anyone ever told you that you are inspiring? Have you guys ever been told that? Is that bizarre to kind of hear that? I mean, you, it's, it's gratifying because you're hoping to inspire people, but it's still kind of strange because they don't see the goofy stuff that you do. People are inspired by you primarily because they see you being consistent. And that is so amazing. It's inspiring. They desire it for themselves even. They want to be near it. Now, here's the good news. Being consistent builds trust, true? Better than anything else. And it draws people to you at the same time. It builds trust and it draws people to you. It's a double-edged, well, I don't wanna say sword. It's double-edged in a good way, <laughs> okay? It brings people to you and um, it, it builds trust. Now, here's a great book. This uh, principle, people respect consistency, consistency and desire it for themselves is from one of my favorite books. It's called Influence. If you have not read this book, I always recommend it in this training. Here it is, go get it. It's, it's a book, like you're gonna have to slog through this a little, but it's worth it, especially for the leaders on the team. Leaders and aspiring leaders, read this. Influence, Psychology of Persuasion by Robert Cialdini. Okay. So are you, are you as consistent with your relationships was the question that I wanted to ask you. Um, the truth is this, people won't believe you till they see you. What do I mean by this? You're on, you're, you're, you're on this, this journey, right? You're building a new life with Juice Plus and you're sharing the journey. People are watching. In fact, if you're sharing it on social media, a lot of people are watching on social media. Um, they watch you and they're, and they're there with you even though they may not comment or like your posts, they're watching you. You're like a TV show that they're watching. And they wanna see, will this thing work for her? Will this thing work for him? And then you put up this post. Join me. Oh my gosh, this is so amazing. Come join me. This will be great. And some of you leaders who have reached a level of success might say something like, I'm taking my six leaders to Aruba this weekend. We're having a retreat. Wouldn't it be great if you were number seven, you know? And, and you're like, why wouldn't everybody respond to that, right? But here's the thing. They're watching you on TV. They don't believe you. They don't believe you are inviting them. Why would they think you're talking to them when they haven't heard from you personally since high school? You guys, you guys hear me? They see you and they think it's great and a lot of them are happy for you. They don't believe you're talking to them, okay? You need to connect with people. Relationship building is a contact sport. You need to be in regular contact with people if you wanna have a relationship with them. I will even tell you this, you wanna have a business, you need to be in regular contact with every single person you know. And I know that for some of you, that's a lot of people and time is scarce. But with the right system, which I'll show you in a minute, you can do it. 
Here's the principle. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. I'll just give you an example of this real quick. And, what, and then I'll jump into Teams and we'll start demonstrating how to do this. How many of you have ever received? Now, for those of you who are comfortable, turn your cameras on because I'm looking at you now. How many of you have ever received a great card from somebody you care about, like a hand with a handwritten message in it, like a really good one? Anybody like me like the card better than the present? That's me. My wife's like, thanks for the card, honey. Where's my present? <laughs> Different love languages, right? Different love languages. When you get a great card and somebody writes a message in it, isn't it amazing how it can move you emotionally? Um, you know, you can actually be really moved sometimes more so than if somebody tells you something when they write it down for some reason. Now, let me ask you a question. When you get a card like that, how many of you, after you've read it, go, that was nice. And then crumble it up, throw it in the trash can. Is anybody good at throwing those away? How many save those to the chagrin of your spouse? And you've got a big drawer of them somewhere, a box full of these cards, right? <laughs> Julie's showing me one right now. It's very hard to throw away a great card, isn't it? It's kind of one of those things you treasure. Now, the thing, one of the things that I find really um, amazing about this, there's two things I find amazing about cards like that. Not only do you keep them, but if you read them years later, you'll often have the same or even a stronger emotional response than you had the first time. Isn't that amazing? But what is really cool is when we pass away, those cards and letters are what are most treasured by our descendants, aren't they? Some of you probably have something like that from somebody you love who's passed away. It has a lingering impact that's deep. Now, quick question. How about this? Have you guys ever received a happy birthday postcard? This one, see it's a postcard. This one is from my um, life insurance salesman. Anyone? Dentist, life insurance salesman, you get those? My dog gets it from the vet and it also says she needs new rabies shots on the same card. <clears throat> Does this card get saved in a special place? How many throw these postcards away as soon as you see them? And we all throw them away. What's the difference? This has no value. The other one is priceless. The difference is this took no time. This took no time investment. Does this make sense? He invested no time in this. It's nice. It makes me think of him for a second, so I guess it's worth it to him. But it's not valuable to me because it didn't require any time for him to do. Investing time and connecting with people is how you build relationships. It's the only way. And if you're wondering why you do this beautiful post and you get three people to respond to it, that's why. Okay. If you want to connect with people, you got to take some time and connect with them. Now here's the good news. You don't have to start writing letters to everybody in your, on your list. Just sending them a Facebook message or a text message one-on-one -on -one can be all it takes, that little tiny investment of time into them personally. And I'll show you how to do it really effectively and efficiently in a second in Teams. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> I think I've got one more slide and then we'll jump into Teamsy. All right. So here's the thing. How many of you like what you're hearing? You're like, yeah, philosophically we're aligned. I believe in what Eric's saying, great. You need a system though. Believing in relationships, taking care of, loving on people, all that is great, but you have to have a system to apply. Okay, this is a business. You need a way to stay in contact with all your relationships. You need to know when to contact them. In other words, <laughs> I don't want you looking at a list and wondering what to do, spending three hours planning a power hour. You just need to be able to have a system that says, Here's who's up next, Eric, contact them. Know what to say. How many of you stare at the screen and wonder what to say to somebody? You need a system so you just know what to say to start your conversation and make sure that nobody ever falls through the cracks. Ugh, that hurts for me to say, doesn't it? Nobody ever falls through the cracks. Look, this is huge. How many of you have had somebody fall through the cracks and sign up with somebody else? If you haven't, you haven't been in the business very long, right? I'm going to teach you how to follow up in a couple of minutes so that that will not happen. Okay. So that other people won't harvest the vineyards you planted. All right. Let's jump in here. Where's Teamsy? It's on one of these screens. You guys ready to see this thing? Okay. Here's the Teamsy for Juice Plus dashboard. First off, I want you guys to know those of you who have not 
been exposed to Teamsy in the past, you can get a free trial of Teamsy at Teamsy.com. Go to Teamsy.com, hit start trial. It's free. We don't ask for your credit card or anything. We don't want it. We just want you to love it. Okay, use it and love it for 30 days. Brand new people <clears throat> can, get, can get cranking with Teamsy their first 30 days um, and, have, and be good to go, be, be fully cranking in their business their very first month. Okay, so um, that's the idea. Teamsy.com free trial. All right, so here's this. Here's the dashboard. It's customized, as you can see, for Juice Plus. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through setup, show you how easy it is to set this thing up, and then we'll do a power hour together. I'll show you how to do a power hour, how we can connect with 20 people in 20 minutes. How cool is that be? And then do our follow-ups like a pro and bring people onto our team all while making their day, helping them and loving on people, not doing anything gross or dishonest. <laughs> Nothing icky. How many of you don't want to do anything icky? Yeah. And you felt like that's holding you back your business because you didn't want to do anything icky. You don't need to. I am here to tell you, I've been in this business. I haven't been in the direct sales business for 16 years, but I've been building businesses with business owners for 16 years. And building relationships generates more leads and more business and creates a sustainable business that's enjoyable faster and better than any other approach there is. So you can feel good about it. Not only are you going to feel good about your, how you handle your customers and your team, but you are in the place where you're going to learn the best system, the most effective system. All right, so let's do this. <clears throat> when you first come into your free trial, it brings you into a setup wizard that helps you set up teams. I'll take you through it real quick. Okay. Um, you can relaunch it right here in the little uh, settings. Taking the setup wizard. There's a video from some guy. looks like me. All right. Um, let's get started. We're going to do the three things in the setup wizard. First thing we're going to do is set your income goal. Just going to set an income goal. How much money would you like to be earning 12 months from now? So it's your annual income. What annual income level would you like to be at 12 months from now? I put 150,000 in as my example. Okay. So put in whatever your income goal is. Please though, at least make it six figures. Okay because Teams is gonna make this pretty easy to attain if you can do it consistently. 150 grand, boom, let's go to the next page. Teams he's now crunched those numbers and told me to, to do this, um, to get to this goal in a year, I need to connect with 4,348 people. Okay, is that a lot? How many of you think that's a lot of people? Yeah, how many people, how many of you think that there's no way you could get to six figures your first year? Anyone? This is how you do it. You get to six figures your first year by connecting with 4,348 people. Okay, it's doable. Now, I'm going to show you that you can do it in an hour a day. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Let's go to the next page. The next page breaks that big number down into bite-sized chunks. It takes it into my three groups, prospects, customers, distributors. Okay, now if you're brand new, you won't have customers or distributors yet. That's cool. You can put everything on prospects. If you already have a team and you're looking at this, then you're going to want this division. And then it breaks it down all the way down monthly, day, weekly, daily. And my daily goal is what I'm going to do. See, you just need to focus on one day at a time in order to, listen up guys, this is an important principle. To grow your business big, you must keep your focus small. Okay, to grow your business big, you must keep your focus small. So yes, set that goal for 12 months and then forget it. What can I do today? In this case, we're going to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four distributors, 19 connects. A connect, by the way, is not a cold invite. It's not a, a, a cheesy video link asking them their opinion on the video or sending them a sample and telling them to tell you what they think, right? None of those things. A connect is just saying hello. It's just, hey, I'm just reaching out. The goal of the connect is to make someone's day. We call it the make someone's day mindset, just to make somebody's day. You want them to smile and go, wow, that was cool. Okay, we're just gonna connect. All right, step one is just connecting. So in this case, the goal is to connect with 19 people, nine prospects, six of my customers. By the way, who's a customer? Anyone who's ever bought something from you is a customer, okay? It does not matter to me if Juice Plus considers them a customer, a current customer. If they bought from you in the past, they're your customer. Make sense? Okay. And then distributors, that's your team. Now, you also got another goal, which is inviting people. This goal defaults to three a day, okay? So we're going to start 19 conversations and our goal is out of those 19 conversations, we'll have three opportunities to invite. What does invite mean? It means to invite someone to learn about the business, 
to a three-way call, to an event, to an online event, to try a product, to coffee. I don't know. What do you invite people to? Okay. You're creating conversations and you're finding opportunities to invite when appropriate. This is how you build relationships and don't scare everybody away. And you're able to still help people at a high rate of help. Make sense? Okay. Next goal is ads. These are new people you're putting on your list. You just always need to be meeting new people, putting new people on your list. Okay. Whatever you configure these two, again, if you've got no distributors, you can just make that a zero and put it over here on prospects. When you click continue, it sets your Teamsy dashboard up to your specific goals. Okay. And it will give you those daily targets to hit. Make sense? All right. <clears throat> next page is, next piece is finding your why. Finding your why. Um, my team's always asking me to skip this part because they, because you don't actually have to do it to use Teamsy. But I'm not going to skip it because it's super important. Did you guys know the statistic? One out of two people quit their first year. How many of you guys have lived that with your team? One out of two quit the business their first year. Crazy, right? Why do people quit? Well, just to put it bluntly, we're quitters. <laughs> That's why. All of us are. As much as we don't like to admit it, the truth is, is that the only times we don't quit is when we have a strong enough reason not to. That's why you hear people talking about the my why, you need to find your why, you need to find your purpose. You, got, you have to because otherwise you'll quit. Look, a really, the best illustration ever of, of the why I love, it's from Darren Hardy's book, uh, Compound Effect. Who's read that book, anyone? Get that one if you haven't read it, it's great. He talks about, uh, there's an example where he says, he puts a balance beam on the ground and he says, would you walk across this balance beam on the ground for $20? How many of you guys would do that? I would, heck yeah. I'd do it for, just for fun. Now he says, I take the same balance beam and I put it between uh, across the tops of two 40-story skyscrapers. How many of you would now s s scurry across that balance beam for $20? Anybody? The why is not big enough, is it? <laughs> no way. I wouldn't even do it on one story. I'm, I'm a wimp when it comes to heights. Um, now he changes this. He changes the story. He says, now you're at, you're on the roof looking across that balance beam. And on the other side, on the other roof are your children and that building's on fire. Now will you go across that balance beam to get your kids? How many of you would say yes to that? The difference is the why. Do you see what I mean? Now I'm going to take you through the process of finding your why really quick. I, I want you to know it's not one of these deep uh, belly lint um, investigations that you need to go through to figure out your why. You don't need to read 50 books or go to classes or go to a sweat lodge in Sedona. I mean, you can do that if you want and write it off your taxes. <laughs> Business owners, you got to love it. But I'm just telling you, you don't have to do that. The truth is you already know your why. It's in your heart. You just have to take 10 minutes to think about it, to pull it out. Okay. Your why needs to be in your face constantly because it's important that your brain believes it. The reason why you don't have, how many of you have the life you've always wanted already? You're done. You're just here for fun because you heard Eric's fun to listen to. Anybody got the life you wanted already? No. The reason why you're in the life you're in and not the one you want is because you haven't programmed your brain yet to get you there. We stay in our patterns. And so all of this personal growth stuff that we do is to help us rewire our brain to put us in the new pattern that we want to be in, right? So the why is an important piece. I'm going to take you through the process. It's actually quite simple. There's five questions just to get your juices flowing, just to get your mind on this, to bring you through and get your first draft of your why to help you stay focused. I'm going to share my personal story as an example. Example. I know your story will be different, probably much more dramatic than mine. I've been very blessed. My life's been kind of dull. That's good, right? So let's, let me take you through this. There's five questions. The first one is, why did you become a distributor? Why did you become a distributor? Now, in my case, I, uh, I lost a bunch of weight. I lost 60 pounds. So I looked different. And people were asking me, what are you doing? And I would tell them, oh, I did this. And they'd go, great, cool, thank you, all day long. Finally, my wife said, Eric, go be a distributor. You could get paid for all those referrals. I said, oh, I, I never thought of that. So I signed up. I didn't, I, I wasn't thinking about changing the industry. I didn't even know there was anything wrong with it <laughs> until I 
got onto my first leadership call with other leaders from my network and realized they all thought I was a freak because I wanted to build relationships. Next question, what do you hope to accomplish? What do you hope to accomplish? In my case, I wanted to make $500 a month extra money. That was it. I just wanted to make $500 a month extra money. Um, great. Next question. Why is that important to you? I wanted to save it. I just wanted to put it in the bank. Anybody relate to that desire to put money in the bank? Okay, so let me just give you a little background on this. I, my background is in coaching, business coaching. Specifically, the majority of my people that I worked with were real estate people and mortgage people, <laughs> which was the best choice ever because that business was booming for years until what happened. The Great Recession came. Did anybody get beat up by the Great Recession like I did? In an instant, that industry disappeared. The real estate industry disappeared. The mortgage industry disappeared. And so did coaching those people. So I was out of work with half the country. And, um, you know, it, it was scary. It was very scary. And we made it through. I mean, we were blessed. We made it through that recession intact. But we used our savings up the first 60 days that I didn't have work. And, um, and we stopped saving. We went paycheck to paycheck. And at the point where I was starting my network marketing business, I was almost seven years paycheck to paycheck. Crazy, right? I know a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, but it had been a long time since I had lived that way and it's terrifying. So I thought, wow, if I could put 500, if this business would put $500 in the, a month into the bank, that would be great, right? And you have to let yourself think about these things. Like, what do you really want? Because the truth is, is when you're in survival mode, you don't stop to think about what you want. You just think about what you need to do next, right? Why is that important to you? Okay, I want to put it in the bank. Next question, what would achieving this mean to you and your family? What would achieving this mean to you and your family? I wanted to buy a new house, that's what I wanted. And I'm, I'm here to tell you guys right now, I'm super excited, uh, we closed on a new home this week. So you'll be seeing in about three weeks from moving, so you'll see new Teamsy office for these trainings, I'm super excited. These things do happen, right? I wanted to buy a new house, my family had outgrown our home. We were on top of each other. My wife and I have four kids. We didn't have any when we started. Isn't it funny how that works? And the house seemed big then. I just dreamt of a new home. We, we were upside down on our mortgage at one point, $250,000 because of the recession. And I live in Southern California. And, um, and I just thought, wow, if I could save money long enough, maybe we could buy a new home. I just dreamt. How many of you dream of a new home for your family? Yeah, I mean, I just wanted a little bit more. I wanted to come home and work in a home office not and be be with my fan you know anyways next question why is that meaningful how does this make you feel why is that meaningful how does this make you feel when i really stopped to think about this i realized that it wasn't as much of just wanting a new house as it was that the home was um it was symbolic of my of the family right don't you guys think that and the truth is, is I hadn't taken the time to think about it or admit it to myself. But when I looked around and thought about this, I realized that I was not part of my family's life. I mean, I was the guy that came and went and brought home money, but I was, I was too busy working and I was not present with my family. I would see my kids in the morning and kiss them goodbye, go to work. And I, they were still in their pajamas when I left. They were in their pajamas when I came home. Uh, I never even saw my kids in, in regular clothes unless it was the weekend and I wasn't traveling. And I realized that I was going to completely miss their childhoods like so many dads before me have, right? And, um, and as far as my marriage, I mean, 45 minutes a day isn't exactly great quality time with your wife. And I realized I was going to miss it all. I didn't really understand how I could change anything. The truth was, was I, I liked my career. I had I, I was considered very successful. I made good money. I had lots of respect. I had a beautiful office, <laughs> right? But there was nowhere else for me to grow. I was at the top of my career. I'd have to find a new career to do, to do more, and I'd probably have to work more. So as I started thinking about this, I had kind of an aha moment, okay? I had kind of an aha moment. Here's what I realized. I realized if I really wanted a new life to be with my family, to be present with them, to not be worried about money, to be able to have money in the bank, to buy the new home we wanted, 
I needed to take a different route because my career wasn't getting me anywhere. I was stuck. But the network marketing, the direct sales opportunity had no limits imposed on it, does it? And I thought to myself, wow, I need to stop treating this as extra money. I need to start treating my job, my career as extra money. And as soon as I made that switch, I started thinking, of, this is my business and that job is my extra money. It changed everything. And I wrote my very first why statement down. I'm going to share it with you guys, okay? It's actually the sample text. Oh, hold on. i got to share my screen with you for you to see this. It's actually a sample text in Teamsy. So when you guys go in there, you'll see it. You'll see my why. This is the why statement I wrote. My why, to create a life where I never have to worry about money again. I enjoy quality time with my family and I'm present for my children on a daily basis. I'm healthy and full of energy. See, once you create a why statement like that, that's more than, gosh, I'd like to make $500 a month or whatever. It convicts you. It convicts you. And now it's in your face. Gee, I don't feel like doing this today. Oh, really? So you, so you want to be worried about money? You don't want to be with your family? You don't want to invest in your marriage? You don't want to be with your kids on a daily basis? You have to be, you have to be convicted by it. Does this make sense? No, I, I do want those things. All right, then get off your rump and spend 30 minutes in Teensy and crank it out. Okay? And the why will help you be more productive than you would have been. When you might have done it once a week, now maybe you're doing it three times a week. That's a huge difference. Does this make sense? Especially when you share it with loved ones and accountability partners. <laughs> then they'll convict you of it. Okay, look, functionally, whatever you put in this box, when you hit continue, it publishes to the dashboard of Teamsy. Okay, really quick, I just want to share something with you guys. What happened for me when that when I wrote that why down? Just it, it's not even been three years ago. Isn't that amazing? Not even been three years ago. Within ninety days, I left my job. I came home to work. There was no room for me to work. I couldn't even work on the kitchen table because it was covered with kid stuff. Anybody relate to that? I bought a shed. How many of you know my story of my shed? I know Julie knows the story. I know Michelle knows the story. I went to Home Depot and I bought a shed, the kind you put your lawnmower in. Do you, anybody have a lawnmower shed in your backyard? Did you know you could build an empire from there? Check this out. I ran an extension cord out to this thing. I drilled a hole in the wall. I stuck the extension cord through the hole in the wall, filled it up with foam, and, and I called it my office. I started working from the office. My kids called it the shed quarters. To get things started. That's how we did it. Now that house is sold and somebody probably has a garage, probably has a lawnmower in there. <laughs> but the point is I made it happen. I made it happen. I had to drop. It was just not even, didn't even have a foundation. It was dropped in the dirt, but it, it worked. The why is why it worked. Once I had the why, it was clear I needed to make something happen. Make sense? And here we are just a couple years later. Okay. Let's see, last step, you're gonna get your contacts in. You, look, if you've already got a team, you're gonna to go to Juice Plus back office. There's some, um, there's some instructions here on this video. And you're gonna get your team in first, then you're gonna get your customers in, and then you're gonna get your Facebook contacts in. That's the first three lists you want. Now, if you're new and you don't have a team, you don't have customers, don't worry about the back office stuff. I mean, if you have three people on your team, just put them in manually, it takes a half a second, okay? But you wanna get your Facebook friends imported. There's instructions here on how to do it. It's so cool because now you won't be going through Facebook Messenger trying to figure out who to connect with. Teams is going to take those names and organize them for you and tell you who to connect with on a daily basis. Pretty awesome. Anywhere else that you have contacts, you bring them into Teamsy. Okay, get everyone in one place. I don't want to hear about you guys having uh, pads of paper, random lists, shoeboxes full of sticky notes. Oh my gosh. Spreadsheets that are not updated. Forget all that stuff. Get it all in Teamsy. Be organized, okay? All right. And there's one last step for setup, and then we'll do our power hour together. The last step, I'm going to go to team, the team page. So on the left side, your navigation, right? Dashboard's where we were. The team page is where your CRM lives. That's your, your uh, customer relationship manager. It's basically a Rolodex, electronic Rolodex. Your whole list is here, okay? All your team. You've got your uh, prospects, your customers, your distributors, you can, or you can get everyone, okay, together. Now, what's going to happen is after you do your imports, it will bring you here automatically or you can come here at any time. And it's gonna put you in rank mode. And I'm gonna turn that on right here from this menu, rank mode. This lets you go down your list and rank people on a five-star scale. Okay, five stars is awesome. Three, one star is not awesome. Pretty easy, right? 
everyone's going to start out at three and you can just change them up or down if you want or leave them. Select friends show, like boom, five, just click on it. Okay, changes their rank. If you want to delete them, you hit the trash can. Simple. Why do we do this? Because with relationship marketing, you guys need to understand some basic concepts. 80% of your business will come from 20% of your relationships. Okay, 80% of your business will come from 20% of your relationships. You need to spend more time building relationships with the best people. Who are the best people? Your best relationships, the people who already know you and trust you and love you. Okay? So what you need to do is go down this list and remember, everyone defaults to three stars. You're gonna be looking for people you feel good about and you're gonna move them up to four and five stars. Just on your gut, just on your gut, I really like this person, I love Bliss, I want her to be a five star, okay? Now let me just give you my definitions for these so you understand what they do in Teamsy when you've ranked them. A five star is someone most likely to become a customer or distributor or they're an existing customer or distributor that's a rock star or they're just your favorite people. Your mom should be five stars, hopefully. Maybe four stars, but either way, she's up there. A five star comes up every 30 days on your up next list, okay? Every 30 days they come up for you to connect with. All right, four stars, someone likely to become a customer or distributor with a little nurturing or they're there, your good relationships, your solid relationships, okay? Four star people come up on your up next list every 60 days. So they're cycling through a little bit less often, but still very often, every 60 days. Three stars could go either way. They show up every 90 days, every 90 days, okay? Most of your people will be three stars. Two stars are getting colder, they show up every 120 days. This makes sense? More stars, more often, okay? With me? This is an important step. If you, if you don't do this, then everyone will be treated the same and you'll be spending a lot of your time on the 80% on the, um, of your list that will only bring you 20% of your business. Make sense? So make sure you do this. That way you're, you're touching all the best people more often and you're still working through your whole list as you go. Okay, now that we've done that, we're ready to, to do our power hour. Couple things I wanna show you on the dashboard. Today's activities, these are the goals that we set and set up. You can change these anytime by clicking edit goals. Our goal is to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four distributors. That's to get to our $150,000 goal, right? Great. Down here is the power hour module. See, that, see where it says power hour? The left side are my up next lists. Prospects, customers, distributors, follow-ups. Four lists, okay? Each list gives me five names only. That keeps me focused. It keeps me... Um, from getting overwhelmed, all right? We start from left to right. On the right-hand side is where we log the activity as we go. First person on my list is Jay, I'm gonna connect with Jay, all right? So here's what I'm gonna do. Instead of getting stuck and staring at my screen and wondering what the heck to say, I'm gonna use one of Eric's icebreaker scripts. <laughs> I put them in here, see where it says scripts? Just grab one of these, these have been refined, they work amazing. Here's connect number one. Hi Jane, just stopping by to say hello. How are you? Hope your day is awesome. Okay, copy that script. Boom. I'm gonna paste it in here so that I can edit it. Right, I gotta change the name. Maybe put an emoticon on this guy. I like emoticons. Okay, boom, now it's the way I want it. And I'm gonna send this as a Facebook message. I have to actually send it in Facebook, right? Facebook doesn't let you send messages for it. So I'm just gonna copy that. It's perfect, just the way I want it. I've got Facebook open up here, okay? Um, and I'm going to look up Jay. There she is. And I'm gonna send her this message. Okay, paste it in, send, done. Go back to Teamsy, and to log this, I just click this big blue log connect button. Done. See, I've got one up on my board now. Next person's Michelle. Watch what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna paste it in here, change the name. Damn, how easy is that? Gonna look her up. See how easy this is? So easy. Sent, go to, back to Teamsy, log, 
Do you guys see how I could do 20 of these in 20 minutes? Seriously? You can just use the same one over and over. Jamie would be next. I would just go to Jamie. We've got two done. We're going to keep going until we get our goal, which in this case is nine. My goal is nine. I'm just going to keep going down the list, sending these messages. Now, here's a little pro tip. Some people will respond right away. Don't get off on the conversation yet. We're going to finish sending all of our outgoing messages first to start conversations, and then you can start having them as they come in. Okay? So we're going to keep going down our list until we hit our goal, which in this case is nine. The goal, again, is just to make someone stay, get them to smile. And when they respond, now your goal is to have a regular conversation with them. Find out what's going on with them. Have a conversation with them. Okay, and I'll explain to you guys what we do with that conversation in a minute. When you're done with your prospects, you go to the next list, which is customers. Okay. And uh, you go to your, oops, I only have one customer left. I guess I better get out and start prospecting. So you're going to go to your customers, right? So the first person on my list is Abigail. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to scripts. Okay. I'll grab some customer scripts. I made this so easy for you guys, by the way. Hi, Jane, you're doing so great. I'm proud of you. Congratulations on getting off your high blood pressure medication because you're great in nutrition. I don't know, that's just an example of somebody that I helped. Um, hi, John, how are you enjoying your tower garden? Send me an update. Let me know how I can be of help. These are just connects with customers. Do you guys see, I threw a tower garden and it says the products. I see a couple of you guys going, does it say that? <laughs> okay, you gotta customize these a little bit. Um, here's one of my favorite ones. Hi, Jane, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. By the way, if you go send that to all your customers right now, you'll be shocked at the response you get. Same thing, copy the script, okay, put it, drop it in here. I can get my thing to click. Paste it in there, okay, change the name. Abigail, good biblical name right there, boom. Hi, Abigail, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day, boom, okay. Great, I would copy this, send it in Facebook, log it here, boom. Now I'm gonna keep going on my customer list until I get to my six. Make sense? All right, and then you go to your distributor list. Now, just really quick, a couple things I want you guys to know about staying in touch with customers. And remember my definition of customers, everyone who's ever bought something from you, okay. If you are in regular contact with your customers, they will order more products, that's it. You don't need to sell them. You don't need to send them catalogs or links. If you're, in regular if you're in regular contact with them, they will order more products, okay? If you connect with them regularly, they're going to be watching you on social media more regularly. They're gonna see your messages, more reg your posts more regularly, and they're going to buy more products. I have had leaders come into a 30-day free trial challenge with their team and watched their team volume go up 30, 40% in one month. And it's not just because they're, they're creating new business, it's because they're getting a lot of business from their current customers just by being in touch with them, okay? The, the other major reason you need to be in touch with your customers on the regular is, how many of you, how many of you guys by show of hands would like new customers? Anyone, anyone interested in a new customer? Where do you suppose you go get a new customer? The best place for a new customer is a current customer. Okay, the best source of a new customer is a current customer in any business because a customer who's using a, a product and loves it is already talking about it. True? I think the number is 87% of people uh, make purchasing decisions based on the recommendations of friends. Would you say that's true for you guys? That means that your customers already have friends who are ready to buy. Are you connected with them? Are you getting introduced to those people? Some of those people already bought it. They went online and found it. They didn't know about you because you're not in touch with the customers, okay? Stay in touch, Teamsy makes it easy. With me? Okay, last bit here is your team. Gotta talk to your distributors. That's why we call it Teamsy. You gotta build that relationship with your team the same way. Send them a message. I got a couple scripts here, but you don't need this. You don't need scripts for this. Just send them a message. Hey, Julie, I was thinking about you today. How's everything going? Is there anything I can do to help? Quick messages. Listen, having a Facebook group is great. Um, doing live Zooms is great, but they need to hear from you one-on-one, -on -one. okay? Just really quick, um, they've done all kinds of studies on what makes people productive. It's not money. It's relationship. People will produce, they will work their tail off for the team. They will work their tail off for you, for that relationship. And they'll get the money as a result, okay? You gotta build that team and that family. Just, you do it by staying in touch with people. Prospects, customers, distributors. Your power hour looks like this, everyone. 
you connect with your prospects, you connect with your customers, you connect with your distributors. That takes you maybe 30 minutes to go through all those. Then you've got your follow-ups list. Who's on the follow-ups list? Okay, when you get into Teams, your follow-ups list will be empty because you have to put people on the follow-ups list. Now, everything we've been doing so far is just connecting. We haven't been following up. We've just been connecting, having conversations with people. We put people on our follow-ups list when we've invited them to the business. Okay? And we don't invite people to the business unless it's appropriate. In other words, in other words, through our conversation, we have uncovered interest. Man, I wish I had an hour right now just to do this piece. But I don't. So you've got a couple people here who have had deeper trainings from me. You can ask them some questions on this, but I'm just going to give you the basics. So I messaged Michelle. I'll make your day message. She says, oh my gosh, great to hear from you, Eric. How are you? We're great. Thanks for reaching out. Something like that. I say, great. Well, tell me what you've been up to. I know it's been a long time. What have you guys been up to? Send me an update. So she gives me her update. We just had the craziest, busiest summer, you know, tells me everything that they did. Wow. That's so cool. Now, as I'm talking to her and we're messaging back and forth, having conversation, my goal is to listen and to ask questions and figure out what she needs. What does she need? What are her wants? What are her needs? Is she complaining about anything? Because complaints are the best. Complaints tell us pain points, right? And a lot of times a complaint will be a joke. People will make a joke. Listen for those, okay? Listen for those. They don't expect you to take it seriously, but when you respond um, sincerely to them making a complaint joke, it usually leaves a deep impact. So I'm listening for wants and needs, trying to find a way to help her. Now, I don't... I am not focused on my business at all right now because I am just trying to figure out what she needs. Does she need a recommendation to a new dentist? Does she need a prayer because she lost a loved one? Does she need support? Does she need advice? I don't know. I'm listening for that, seeing if I can help in any way. I need her to know that the relationship is paramount. Now, at some point in the conversation, it's going to be my turn to share, and I am going to share my heart, I'm going to share my passion, and I'm going to share my mission with her. What have you been up to, Eric? Oh, I don't know if you know. Um, I know it's been forever since we talked, but I recently lost 60 pounds. Oh, you did? That's amazing. Yeah, and it changed my life in so many ways. It's kind of even hard to describe, but it has made me very passionate about paying it forward by helping other people do the same. So now I'm on a mission to help people lose weight, get healthy, improve their vitality, She's like, wow, that's really great, Eric. Do you, see, do you see what I mean? When I share my heart and my passion, she has no choice but to be excited for me. It does not matter if she's interested in my products. It doesn't matter if she's not interested in my products. She's going to be excited for me. Do you see where I'm coming from? And then I'll tell her. You know, uh, Michelle, if you know anybody, by the way, who needs help with that, whether it's weight loss, whether it's just health, nutrition, illness, just getting strong, whatever. I want you to know it's my passion. I would love to help them. If you can connect me, I'll do what I can to help them. Maybe even you might be interested in that. I'm here for you too. Okay, so I would say something like that in the conversation. She might say, that's great, Eric. I'll keep you in mind. That's the end of the conversation. Great. Now, what might happen sometimes is Michelle says, uh, well, truth be told, I could use some help with that myself. I'm great. You know, I would love to help you. I would love to help you, Michelle. Why don't we do this? Can we jump on a quick phone call so that I can ask some questions and see what your goals may be and see if maybe there's a way I can help or not? I'm not sure. Um, she's great. Let's do that. So we jump on a call. We might get her on a call or a Zoom and I ask her my questions. What are your goals? Why is that your goal? What are you hoping to achieve? You know, what would you like to improve? What are you frustrated with? I'm going to ask her questions like this now that I have her permission to ask her those questions. And then I'm going to prescribe a solution based on everything you're telling me. I think I can help you. Here's what I prescribe for you. Are you guys with me? I love it. But okay. So I'm looking at a couple of you guys who've been in my trainings. I'm looking at you guys going, are you getting new stuff from this? Because I think you've seen this training a few times. That's good. I never know what I'm going to say. You know, I don't have a script. Um, so she's like, great, good. Here's what I'm going to do, um, Michelle. I'm going to send you an email right now. It has the links to every product we just discussed. Okay, you can go ahead and purchase those. And then we'll talk about next steps. Great. It's an, I'm, I'm firing it up. It's going to send you your email right now. I'll connect with you tomorrow and see if you have any questions. Perfect. This is an example of an invite, okay? 
I might have had, it might have been a conversation about the business opportunity. I might have invited her to a business opportunity meeting, uh, an event, online event or something. But now I'm going to put, show you how I'm going to do it. Now, she's no longer on my dashboard. I have to look her up. Okay. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to log this invite. I open the connect box here and I click where it says invite. Okay. So let's say uh, I got, well, I don't really have the, let's say it was share products. Okay. I'm going to pick one of these invites and I'm just going to put a note. Um, what I, you know, whatever I recommended products, products, regime, whatever. Okay. Regimen, just as an example. And I send it via email. Okay, great. So look, it automatically set a follow up for two days. I actually am going to change that. You can change it to any time you want. That's just a fail safe. So you don't forget to put them on your follow ups list when you do an invite. I'm going to put it on tomorrow. Okay. So now when I log this invite connect, it's got a follow up set. So she's on my follow ups list for tomorrow. See her right there. So now when I do my, my power hour tomorrow, do just like I did today, prospects, customers, distributors. Then I get to my follow-ups list and I see who's due. They turn red when they're due. So Michelle will be due tomorrow and I will follow up with her. Okay. Now, this is really cool. Let me show you how easy this is. I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to scripts again and I'm going to get a follow-up script. Now I want you guys to know that I put my 10 proven follow-up scripts that I've used and refined over the years, all 10 of them numbered in here for you. <laughs> so easy. Follow-up number one is, hi, Jane, just checking in. Like I promised I would, what questions do you have for me? By the way, always promise them that you'll follow up with them because then your follow-up is an answered promise. It's a deposit in the trust bank. So look, here's what I'm going to do. I copied that script just like I do a regular connect. I'm going to paste that follow-up script in here. I'm going to, I'm going to customize it just like I do the other ones. Okay. Once I have it the way I want it, I'm going to actually send it to her on Facebook because that's where we communicate the best. There she is. Don't send money. We're not there yet. There's the message. Send. Zipped out. Okay. So now I've done my follow-up for today. Now what I want to do is I want to set the follow-up for tomorrow or the next one. Let's say in two days. I'm going to set my next follow-up before I complete this. I want to keep her on my follow-ups list. Okay. Boom. So now she's on my follow-ups list due in two days. Same thing. Every day when I do my power hour, prospects, customers, distributors, follow-ups. The conversations you're starting every day, out of some of those conversations, you're going to find opportunities to invite to something, to an event, to a product, whatever. And then you put those people on your follow-ups list. So that your follow-ups list is your full pipeline of people who are interested right now in learning more. Okay? And everybody else is cycling through the connects box to just build those relationships and generate interest over time. Make sense? Now, really quick, I want to talk to you guys about following up. How am I doing on time? We're almost out of time, aren't we? Or we are out of time. That's all right. I'm just going to keep going. You guys are still here. Here's the thing about follow-ups. 80% of all sales happen between the 7th and 10th follow-up. How many of you guys were excited about hearing that? 80% of all sales happen between the 7th and 10th follow-up, which means if you follow up three times and move on to the next person, you're giving up the vast majority of your sales. This is why people that you're surprised didn't buy from you bought from somebody else because you didn't follow up enough. You need to follow up 10 times on average if you want to make conversions. <laughs> How many, anybody here follow up 10 times typically? Do we have anybody? Everyone's like, no, not even close. Okay, let me just talk to you about this for a second. And I know why you don't do it. First of all, how many of you are not using Teams yet? There's your first reason. You don't have a system. There's no way. You have no chance in heck of remembering who to follow up 10 times with, right? But here's the truth. You don't do it because you're worried about being annoying. True? How many of you, that's the reason? I'm going to teach you how to do it without being annoying. You don't need to be annoying when you, when you follow up. I'm going to teach you right now. You'll never be annoying. People will thank you for it. But first off, you need, to, you need to shift your mindset. Here's the truth. How many of you feel passionately about helping people? and you think you can change their lives through this business opportunity or these products. Okay, great, three of you, four of you, good. I'm talking to you four, the rest of you, you can go make a sandwich. 
you are, here's the, here's the reality. Eight, statistically, 80% of them won't convert to you followed up 10 times, which means that you are not going to get to help those people. Okay. You're not following up 10 times. You're not going to get to help them. Here's what I want you to understand. The follow-up is all you have to help people because until they buy the product, your products are not relevant. And if they're not buying the products, you're not helping them with the products. You can only help them by following up. Make sense? So get this down, write this down. Following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. Okay. Following up is an act of love. On the other side of that coin, not following up communicates this. I don't care about you. Sorry. I cared about you buying, but you didn't. So I've moved on. I don't care about you. Anyone th think that's a little harsh? Think about it though. When did somebody fail to follow up with you and you thought that? I know you're not trying to communicate that, but you need to be aware that failing to follow up communicates you don't care. Following up communicates you do care. And this is why when you do it right, people will thank you profusely for following up and they'll be amazed by it. Okay, two principles for following up and not being annoying. First off, I want you to know this. If you, if you fell asleep right now or you really are making a sandwich, all you have to do is use my 10 scripts in order. They already follow these rules, okay? But here's the first rule. Never ask someone to do anything in your follow-up. Never ask them to do anything in your follow-up. That is annoying. Oh my gosh, can you call me, please? That's the most annoying follow-up ever, isn't it? Call me back. Don't ask them to call you back, text you back, respond, RSVP to an event. Don't ask them to make their purchase. Don't ask them to do anything, okay? The only thing I'll ever ask in a follow-up is something like, do you have any questions for me, <laughs> right? But you don't need to ask them to do anything. Don't give them any homework, okay? That's annoying. Number two, how do I say this nicely? Don't ever call somebody on the telephone. Okay, this isn't one of my rules. My rule is actually make sure that your message is, is messaged. Facebook Messenger, text message, those are your two best. It needs to be in a message format, short and sweet, typed out. Okay? They need to be able to see it on the lock screen of their phone as, an, as a notification. And they need to be able to read the whole thing here. That's how short it needs to be. Why? Because they don't want to open your, your message because they're not going to respond right now. And they don't want you to know they've seen it. Has, do you guys do this? I want you to understand that most people will not respond. People that are interested in what you're doing, who have affection for you and respect for you will not even respond to the first five or six on average. That's just, it's just human psychology. It's nothing personal. That's the way we're wired. And your goal is that they see your follow-ups. That's it. Just that they see them. Okay. So you need to follow these rules. Don't ask them to do anything. So in other words, they don't have to take action on it when they see it and they can see the whole thing without opening it. You guys got those two principles. I don't want anybody asking me, messaging me next week saying, should I message them again? They never even opened my message. They saw it. Okay. I want you to know they saw it. They just didn't open it because they're not going to respond to it. They may never open your messages until you start having conversation. They're like, well, they did see all my messages. Trust me. Follow those rules. Keep following up. Keep following up. Keep following up. Keep following up. Okay. And again, I've got these scripts and teams that makes this super easy for you. And I even know where it's going to start converting. Right? So I'll say things like, um, Number two, hey, I'm just making sure you got my email. Check and see if you have any questions. Number three, uh, hey, I'm excited about the goals we discussed. I can't wait to get started. Number four, just staying in touch so I can help you achieve your goals. Number five, I hope you're doing well. I'm here when you're ready. See how this works? Just staying in touch. She knows exactly why I'm messaging. We talked about it, you know. Number six, I know you were getting excited about getting started. And I promise to be here to help you along the way. Do you have any questions for me? Okay, I'm reiterating the promise that I'm going to be here following up for her. Morning, Jane, just stopping by to wish you a fantastic day. Follow up number eight. Hi, Jane, I know life can be really hectic. I hope I'm not turning into a pass. I'm just trying to follow up and be present when you're ready. Let me know if I can help. Follow up number time, nine, just staying in touch like I promised I would. Okay, look, here's what will happen. People will say, oh my gosh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for staying in touch with me. I really appreciate it. 
and they'll tell you why their life's been crazy and why they haven't responded. You need to love people enough to stay in touch. Make sense? So every time you do a, a follow-up with somebody, set the next follow-up. Okay, make sure you set the next follow-up. And you can do your gut whenever, two days, four days, a week, whenever you want. But set the next follow-up. Keep them on your follow-ups list until they convert. Okay? Now, let's say Michelle does convert. I go into the back office and I see she signed up as a distributor. She's got her product. She's good to go. This is how I'm going to do I'm going to jump over to her record. I'm going to log the sale. In this case, it's just application fee. That way I know she came in as a distributor. And then I'm going to tag, you know, I'll tag what product she bought. I'll put a tag in there so I know what she got. You know, maybe she got other products. I'll tag them all. That's what the tags do to make it easy. And then on the member type, I'll change it from prospect to distributor, personally sponsored. Now she's on my team. How cool is that? All right, let's do some questions. That's how you do it. That's how you set it up. 20, con 20 connects a day, easy. 30 minutes, do your follow-ups. Rinse and repeat. You do that every day, five days a week, you will have a tremendous business. Get your 30-day free trial of Teamsy and do that five days a week for 30 days and you will have your best month ever. I'm telling you right now, go do it. Go do it. Prove me right and we'll celebrate together. All right, let's take some questions. If you guys have questions, just unmute and ask away. I'll take a few questions um, in 10 minutes or so and, we'll, and then we'll send you on your way. Hey, Eric, I have a question. This is Carolyn. Um, I was told that we can go into our virtual office and download all of our cancel customers. Is that true? I've heard that too. Now, I don't have access to your virtual office, but I've heard that from other people too. Do you know if it's been done? <laughs> I believe it has. Hmm. I believe it has. Um, you know what you might want to do, Carolyn, is go into the Teamsy community on Facebook. Are you a member of that group? Yes. Post it in there to say, hey, Juice Plusers. Has anyone done this? And somebody will probably give you the instructions. Okay. Um, if, I get, if I see those instructions in there, I'll put them in the Teamsy Help Center for you guys. Okay. Thank reference. you. But I would highly recommend putting those people in there. Your, your, your can you call them canceled customers? Look, here's, let me give you an example. I just bought a house and it's the third time I've used my real estate agent. She's my friend. I've known her 16 years. She's, she's amazing. The years in between where I wasn't buying or selling houses, do you think she didn't consider me her customer anymore? Think about all the things that you guys have people like that for. Where you're not a currently a customer, but you're there, they are your person. Okay? When it comes to Juice Plus, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to health, you are their person. Okay? Doesn't matter if they haven't ordered in six months. You're their person. So be their person. Make sense? Stay in touch with them. Let them know you care about them. And they will come back. I tell you what. I mean, honestly, whenever you've... I, I hate to I hate to put people in the category of when you're like trying to make bonus or when you're trying to get ranked up or whatever and you've got like one more to do. Have you, how many of you guys have ever been in that situation near the month end? First place I go to is people I would go to is people who have purchased in the past and it's been three or four months since they bought something because they're probably thinking about how they've run out and they need it, right? And you reinitiate those people, you get them going again. It's easy peasy. And, and it shows that you didn't like, you know, just forget about them. Who else has a question? Wow, I must've been really good today. I just, I answered them all as we went. It's all good. Here's the good news. We've got great support at Team Z. Um, there's a help center that's amazing. Lots of videos and FAQs. We've also got uh, live help. Um, you can email via email pretty much. Uh, it's not 24 seven, but a lot of my guys are addicted to helping and they help They help when they're not supposed to, like when they're not working. <laughs> so you can send us messages and get help all the time. And then we also do live, we'll even do live Zooms. Um, those get booked out a little bit because a lot of people enjoy those. But the bottom line is, is whatever you need, we're, we're here to help you. We just want you to get in there, get your 30 day free trial going and get rocking. Okay, if this is a perfect time to get cranking in your business. We're coming into the fourth quarter. Um, October is, you know, the summer was nutty, right? People are starting to get serious again. 
And this is a, a business, uh, a time where, for me, a lot of people in, in direct sales say that November, December is a slow time. For me, it was the busiest. Because what's so amazing about fourth quarter is, everybody says that, and so people take a vacation. You've got no competition. <laughs> you go out there and crank it. And talking about health and nutrition during the holidays when people are so unhealthy, it's the best time. It's the best time. Think about if you could get through the holidays without feeling like that this year. I have a question. Yeah, can there's you, one. I generated one. Can you use, so the people that are in your email address, as well as all the people that you connect with Facebook for your friends, are these all the people that you're talking about putting onto Team Z and putting on a rotational um, a basis? I mean, it, is, is it automatically done like that? Yes. Wow, that's a lot of folks. It's a lot of folks, but here's the thing I want you, is this Marlene? Yes. I can, I'm just guessing because I can't see your face. I know, sorry. Um, your email, the email people are gonna give you a very, very small response rate. So um, what you wanna do is if all, if all you have is an email address, you wanna try to get them connected somehow else. Get their phone number, get them on Facebook. Facebook's the best because people will see those messages. Um, so, one of the things that I would do if you have customers, for example, where they're, maybe they came from the website or whatever, their only email addresses, is I would email them um, and remind them who you are and what you do for them and how you want to help them and say, can we get connected on Facebook? Here's my link. Click this link and send me a friend request. Um, the other thing I would do, but first thing I would do is I would pl plug that email address into my search bar on Facebook and see if a, if a profile comes up. Because sometimes people leave their email address on Facebook as public. So you can drop that in there. It's about 50-50. And if a Facebook profile comes up, I would send them a friend request and say, hey, it's me, your Juice Plus distributor. I found you on Facebook. Okay, okay? so Marlene, the goal with those people is, assume, look, here's, I just wanna give you a, a point of reference. The response rate on average for Facebook messages is 99%. The response rate on email on average with people who know you is 6%. All right. so, do you find that's true when you email people or when you send a blast email and stuff? Like it's a low response rate. So you should still use it, but I'm just, that's my advice to you is try to get those relationships connected with you at a, at a more responsive system. That's all. All right. I'm excited about trying it. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Good. Any other questions? Okay, so I'm gonna bless you guys and send you on your way. Thank you for having me. It was an honor to teach you tonight. Hopefully you picked up a few um, things that you can apply in your business. Um, we hope we'll see you over there in our Teamsy family soon. Um, oh, I didn't tell you what it costs. I, I always forget that part. So it's free for 30 days. After that, if once you fall in love, it's $29.99 a month, less than a dollar a day to have Teamsy ongoing subscription. Okay, you can get a deal for buying it a year in advance type thing, you can save some money. Um, but hopefully we'll see you guys over there. Go get your free trials, get them cranked. Thanks for having me. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.